Hey guys, welcome back for another Leak Code 75 study plan series problem. So today we are still in our binary tree depth first search category and we are doing the path sum three um, problem, which is ranked as a medium cha uh, challenge. And uh, for our instructions, we're given the root of a binary tree in an integer target sum. We have to return the number of paths where the sum of the values along the path equals target sum. This, the path does not need to start or end at the root or the leaf, but it must go downwards. Uh, so traveling only from parent nodes to child nodes. Okay, so I think this is pretty straightforward. We're given a, uh, a binary tree um, right here. Uh, so our root is 10. And then we want to basically see um, for our target sum, we have 8. So we want to see which path sums up to 8. So it's circled right here. Uh, we have 5 and 3, which of course adds up to 8. 5, 2, and 1. And then negative 3 and 11. So we're going to output three because there's three potential paths um, that add up to eight. And notice how it can be subpaths. It doesn't have to start at the root. Um, otherwise, this wouldn't be possible because we have a root that's greater than the target sum. So um, let's go ahead and dive into our code implementation. So first, we want to talk our strategy, right? Our strategy is rooted in three main concepts. Uh, we want to have our prefix sum. So as we traverse through the tree, we accumulate a running total of all the node values so far. And then we also want to use a hash map. Um, so we use this um, to efficiently store our prefix sums. And then um, we use path spotting. So the hash map aids us in detecting paths with the desired sum at each node. So um, as you can see right here, um, similar to the other problems in this category, we have our definition for our binary tree node. So we have our left and our right um, node, as you would expect with the binary tree, um, and then um, our value, uh, which is represented by an integer, right? So um, we're going to want to set up first our uh, class variables for our solution that we can access in both our path sum method um, which is, you know, the default method that we're provided with when you load up this problem. Um, but also we're going to want to make a helper method that does the, uh, that does the depth first search, um, like we have in the other problems in this category, right? So, um, since we want to be able to access those, uh, those class variables from inside of both methods, we need to declare them, um, as class variables. Okay. So, um, in order to do that, we're going to do int count equals zero. Um, which is going to represent the number of uh, subpaths that we have that add up to our target sum. Then we're going to have k, which is going to equal our target sum. And then we're going to use a hash map with long and integer. Um, and we can call this h new hash map, right? Um, so we just initialize that hash map right there. And the reason um, you might be thinking, why are we using long? And the reason that we're using long is because the, uh, the key is going to represent the current sum. And the current sum um, is, can be multiple um, node values, right, um, added together. And since right here we can see in our constraints that a node value can be up to um, 10 to the uh, ninth power, um, which is representative of the um, higher limit for an int, um, we need to use long because it could be multiple values. Um, so long is going to go up to 10 to the 18th power. So that should be large enough for uh, what we're doing here. So uh, let's go ahead and make our helper class first. And then we're going to call that inside of our path sum method. So um, below we'll do that real quick. Um, and uh, let's just start with our method definition. So we'll do public void because we're not returning anything. And we're going to call this pre-order. And then we're going to pass in our current node and our current sum. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is we need to check if the node is null. Um, because we're basically, we're going to use, we're going to recursively call this function. So if the left or the right node um, is when we're, when we're basically when we're traversing the tree, right? Um, if the left or the right node is null, then we're just going to return um, because there's nothing that we can do with that. And then also, as you can see, the number of the nodes in the tree can range from zero to 1,000, um, zero being inclusive, right? So that means that we could potentially be passed in 
a, a tree that is completely null. So we, we want to check for that first um, before we do anything, right? So if nulled node is equal to null, then we want to just return. Okay. Um, so now um, at every node, we want to get our running total, um, which is going to be our current sum. So current sum plus equals node dot val. All right. So now uh, we want what we want to do is when our running sum equals our target k, um, we have identified a suitable path. So um, in order to check that, we're going to use a conditional statement. If current sum is equal to k, then we're just going to increase our count. Okay. Now, um, what we want to do um, is add to our count. So h plus get or default current sum minus k and then zero. All right. So um, basically with why we're using the get or default. Uh, so we want to check if the difference between our running sum and our target sum k has surfaced before. If it has, it suggests that there's paths culminating at the current node. The method fetches the value associated with the key if present. Otherwise, it defaults to the provided value. So in this case, zero. This feature basically averts any potential null pointer issues that we could have. All right. So now what we want to do is h dot put current sum, and then we're going to use our get or default again, and then current sum zero, and then plus one. So here, what we're doing is basically refreshing our hash map, and uh, what we want to do is we register the current prefix sum, and if it's already present, then it's count climbs. All right, so now uh, what we want to do is we want to recursively call our preorder function to check the left and the right nodes. So we're going to do preorder node.left, and then we're going to pass in the current sum. And then we're going to do that again for the right node. All right. Um, so then now what we want to do is when we're exiting a branch, we want to reduce the count of the current prefix sum in our hash map um, to keep our hash map ready for the other branches uh, in the tree. So um, in order to do that, we do h dot put current sum h dot get current sum minus one. Okay, so now that we have our pre-order function ready, what we need to do is uh, call it uh, in our path sum function. So uh, we need to set, first we need to set k equal to our target sum. And then uh, we need to call pre-order and then we're gonna pass in root, of course, and then zero. And then I'm actually gonna put an L to denote long um, just to ensure that zero is treated as a long value in the case that we're working with uh, large numbers. And then now what we want to do is return our count. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, so uh, we, we got our first two test cases accepted. So let's go ahead and submit this. And as you can see, this was uh, accepted um, so um, let's go ahead and analyze the time and space complexity. So the primary function driving the time complexity is our recursive preorder function. At its core, this function visits each node exactly once. Hence, its complexity is big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in our binary tree. While we do perform operations involving the hash map h, the operation we employ get, put, or get our default run in constant time, big O of 1, um, on average, 
Thus, they don't add to the overall complexity in a significant manner. Therefore, our overall time complexity is big O of n. All right, so now for our space complexity, our primary storage mechanism is the hash map H. In the worst case, if all prefix sums are unique and the size of H can grow to n, it makes our space complexity big O of n. Additionally, the recursive nature of our preorder function ensure, means that it utilizes the call stack. Um, and in the worst case of a skewed tree, um, basically like think like a tree that resembles a linked list, it can take up to big O of n space. So considering both the hash map and the call stack, our overall space complexity is big O of n. So there you have it. That's our solution for this problem. Um, I hope that this um, helped to solidify your understanding of uh, binary trees and depth first search. I know this problem was a little bit more on the challenging side than our previous problems in this category. So if you haven't watched any of those videos yet, I would definitely suggest that you do um, in case that you're struggling with this problem. Um, so yeah, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and leave a like. Um, it definitely helps me out as a growing channel and go ahead and subscribe for more related content. Uh, we're still just about halfway through this series, so there's a lot more problems to come. And I also have uh, a lot of other videos on advice for students or new graduates in software engineering. So um, yeah, we'll see you in the next video and peace out.